Hello and welcome to the Soul Shaking Love podcast. I'm Valerie Green from CoachValerieGreen.com, and this podcast is dedicated to bringing you expert teachers to help you to feel that mind, body, and spirit connection, both with yourself and with your true love. And along those lines, I am so excited today to be interviewing transformational coach and wellness expert, Jennifer Joy Jimenez. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. It's Super you. honored to be here. Thank you for having me, Valerie. Yes. And we were just chatting beforehand and her energy is contagious, just her enthusiasm. And I'll tell you a little bit about her. Um, we're going to talk about how to really build that full body confidence. And I'm excited to interview Jennifer because she doesn't just do transformational coaching on mindset. She also includes embodied practices because um, as you've probably heard me talk about before, the conscious mind is just the tip of the iceberg and really full body confidence comes from being in your body and being in your heart and also having the right mindset. So that's what we're going to talk about. And uh, so I'll tell you a little bit about Jennifer and then we'll dive in. So she, for over two decades, has helped difference makers become more confident, more healthy and more joyful through those innovative programs that we just mentioned. She really does transformational retreats. She um, is, uh, you know, she has a very, very extensive bio, which I will put in the show notes. She has um, really been interviewed all over the world by the top experts. And so I'm so excited to have her here. Um, and her innovative coaching programs and retreats blend proven health and wellness science mind-body movement, and transformational spiritual principles, as well as the mindset coaching. So it is just very much in alignment with the mind-body-spirit connection that we talk about here. So that's the first question that I want to ask you, Jennifer. Why is it so important to include the whole being and not just coach people around mindset? I love that question. And I'm so in love with everything mind, body, and spirit. And the conscious mind, I love what your quote, which is, is really just the tip of the iceberg, because what creates the results that we see, we have something here at the Brave Thinking Institute, which is the, the name of the Institute. I'm one of the co-founders of where I do the work. We talk about the results formula, which is basically thoughts create emotions, emotions create and underline the, all of the actions that we take and the actions that we take create a result. So if we're having a result in not feeling confident, if we're having a result in strife within a relationship or, or not feeling as connected to the, to our significant other, right? Oftentimes we go to an outside result that we need to see shift. We might point to the other person and say, well, they need to change and they need to do this. Or in my world and wellness, it's, I need to change something about how I look. I need to lose weight. I need to get fit. And then my inner experience will change. Mm -hmm. Right. And where Just what most people, I would say the common person, the way we're wired is that way to change something on the outside so that we can feel different. What most people aren't ever taught is that actually what precedes thoughts and feelings, it's our beliefs, mm -hmm. our operating system. So if you think about a, a computer, when we first get our brand new baby computer, it's just available, right? It doesn't have any programming. It's kind of like a human baby, right? It's just of like you take a baby and put it in China, it's going to learn Chinese and how to eat that food. You take a baby down to South America, it's going to grow up that way. So it's for these open vessels. And then we are taught things and we have experiences and we, some of us have trauma and that creates this internal operating system and these beliefs that we have about ourselves. And they're operating subconsciously exactly. and the body is the readout of the subconscious yep. and most people like that's a pretty expansive concept so what does that mean and how can you begin to shift your outer experience well number one it's taking full responsibility for the experience we're having and then really beginning to turn on what we call brave thinking tool number one which is just simply noticing noticing what we're noticing 
I'm quoting my mom here directly. Uh, she's one of my mentors. She's actually the founder of our institute. Oh, wow. And when you notice what you're noticing, you realize that who's the noticer? Like I have this physical body, but I am the I am presence, the spiritual part of my being isn't my physical body. I'm a spiritual being having this physical experience. And this body is just simply a vehicle through which I'm living and breathing and having my being. And guess what? This body that I, as a professional dancer, judged, overtrained, starved, abused for years. It was a very programmed relationship with my body and myself, right? That was just abusive and horrible. You know, that could be reprogrammed, that could be repatterned so that I can doesn't matter what I weigh, doesn't matter what size my pants are, doesn't matter if I can kick my leg up to my ear, you know, like I can cultivate this relationship of love and respect and caring. And I can exude this feeling of, I know who I am and why I'm here. And I can make a difference in the lives of others from a place of true inner confidence that it's not the superficial. Well, if I have no, no, what are these called? The, the, the lines between the your eyes, maybe I don't yeah, the, if I'd have no worry lines, cause they're all like you and I can do that, which means we don't have a lot of Botox. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like I want kids to know that I'm mad at them. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> <laughs> But my point just being that, you know, the mind and the body and the spirit, number one, we're, we're one, even though we get taught out of it. And if we really want to see an outer change, it comes from really looking at these beliefs and these beliefs are a somatic experience. It's an embodied experience. Like if I believe that I'm not worthy of love, that's not a thing necessarily just a thought that I'm thinking. I don't walk around going, I don't deserve nice things. Like I just walk around feeling less than, right? And so as we connect to feelings, those live in the body. And if we want to shift ultimately the outer result, we've got to start with what is going on in the subconscious, what challenged some of the thought, the beliefs that we have. And then that automatically helps rise up. Oh, what is this internal operating? What is my default emotional state? Like most people don't know that, you know, they're just walking around in this default emotional state. And I'm so grateful that you talked about some of your own story in our pre conversation and how you you said, I've got the tools. Like I used to live in this operating system of attachment, right? And Tell me the term that you use again in your work. Oh, yes. Yeah. So um, I like to say that I have what's called an earned secure attachment style, but I used to have actually, I think that my attachment style used to be more fearful, avoidant, which or disorganized um, rather than anxious, which is kind of a combination between anxious and avoidant, which is why I understand both. But, you know, all insecure attachment styles are insecure. And what that means is I love what you're saying because I didn't walk around going, I don't deserve love. Of course, nobody thinks that consciously, but those beliefs are in our operating system. And how that manifested for me was, and it's funny, it didn't, I, I always found it easy to get into relationships, but once I was committed to someone, that's when I started getting anxious and pushing him away when my needs weren't getting met and sabotaging it. Like, if you really love me, then you'll pass all my tests, you know, and, and pushing people away. Not consciously though, because unconsciously I believed that if I really revealed my true self, that I would be rejected or abandoned. And so that all, but I didn't know that consciously, I had to do all these embodied healing tools to recognize and reprogram that too. So that's why I love the work that you do. Yeah, so great. So I think, you know, I can just feel the listener saying, great. So I've got all these internally programmed things that I'm not even aware of where do I begin? You know, where do I begin? And, and I love that you talk about all 
successful love in terms of love and relationships and connections starts with yourself in your relationship with you. Right. And that everything else is just a reflection of that. And so that really, I think, brings us to some of the tools that I know you've really utilized for yourself, first and foremost, which I think is how we come into this work, right? We have our own issues. We have our own things. One of my favorite quotes is our issues live in our tissues. Yes. They don't just live in brains, you know, like our entire beingness. And, um, you know, really beginning with that relationship with self and noticing how we treat ourselves. Are we treating ourselves with love? Are we, how are we talking to ourselves? Are we noticing all of our flaws and picking ourselves apart all the time? Or are we being our best friend and really lifting ourselves up in moments that are needed? Are, you know, a lot of the clients that I work with, the way this, the limiting paradigm shows up and the disempowering beliefs is they're not even in their own circle of love. Mm -hmm. Like literally when we just look at a day in the day in the life of you, what does that day look like? You know, where are you on your to-do list, on your love list, on your nurturing list? And a lot of times my clients are like, they're not even getting the scraps, you know, like it's literally their work, their, their team or their, you know, boss or whoever they work with. If they're an entrepreneur or an employee, regardless, they're give, 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 give. If they have kids, if they're a parent, it's make sure that all of that's handled the spouse. If there's a spouse that the spouse is taken care of the dog, the pets, you know, <laughs> that they're fed and their needs are met. And then at the end of the day, is there any time or any love or energy, any energy left for you? Exactly. And I think probably the, the number one paradigm, particularly for, for women is that, and it really goes back, think about tribal times, you know, like if, like that was what was required for the babies to just even survive. But we don't live in that world anymore. So that wiring that like that kind of fight or flight, like I got to make sure everybody's okay is still in our DNA and our cells, but it's not actually our current reality. Like the house is warm. There's food in the fridge. I don't have to go hunt for food today. You know, like uh, there is time to take five minutes and meditate or dance and move or journal or, and then there's more than five minutes, but oftentimes I start with these little five minute power moves because most of the clients I work with are super burned out. And they mm -hmm. like, they're like, I, you can't add me to my list because it's going to drop something else. And I say, well, listen, here's the problem. If you don't, your body will take care of it for you. We've all been there. I've been there where we're, our body just shuts down and says, okay, you won't take a break. We'll all make it happen. And then nothing gets done. Right. And it'll wait, it'll all wait. It'll all be there when, when we're, you know, when, when we turn around, like the, you know, there's always things to do. There's never not something to do. So if we put ourselves in our own circle of love, and one of the things I, I suggest is like this idea of what's the thing that brings you the most joy, mm -hmm. like Valerie, how would you answer that question? Like of all the things you do and all the people, you know, and just aspects of your life, what rises to the top? as the thing that sparks the most joy for you? For me, it is absolutely conscious dance, which I know that you also created your transcendence practice, uh, which is one of the reasons why I first discovered you. Nice. Yeah. So for me, it's the same. It's dance. And yet I can tell you long periods of time in my life when I was my client, before I started to do the work that I do today, when I just had put all the things that I love on the back burner, I'm raising three kids, I'm moving my way up the corporate ladder, and I've just stopped doing what I know works. And no one but me could look at that square in the face, recognize that I was burned out, Mm -hmm. realize that if I don't make a shift, my marriage is falling apart. I were headed for divorce. Literally. I am a cranky complaining and I could use some swear words here. Mm -hmm. Mommy that is not playing with her kids 
Right. And I literally feel, feel in my body that I, if I didn't make a change, I was headed towards illness. So no one was going to change that for me. No one's going to come in. No one, no one forced me to get there and no one was going to force me to get out of there. It was really just like a day of reckoning of to say, okay, let me, let me change something. And actually Valerie, it was on retreat. Um, I was on retreat with my mom. She was leading a three-day women's retreat in Sedona. And that's what, why personal development is so important. I think is it just helps us push pause for a minute and just be like, Whoa, let me look around. How did I get here? Mm-hmm. And do I want to stay here? And what's the quickest way out? <laughs> what's the quickest way to reinvent what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, you know? And really long story short, I had this massive spiritual awakening. God told me you got to quit your job on Monday. I want to be serving through you. And I didn't have a business plan. And it felt like I was diving off the Grand Canyon blindfolded backwards because I was the steady breadwinner for our family. And it was freaking terrifying. Wow. And, um, but I couldn't deny it. Like I couldn't deny it. Just, I was like, okay, God, you've, caught my attention. I will say yes. So I went back and I put in my, my, my 30 day notice and I, I never looked back and I began to move forward, but it didn't all change overnight. One of the tools that I was given were these five minute increments. What do you love most? What fills you with the most joy? And just start plugging that in, in five minutes, five minutes. Cause I was like, I am up to my eyeballs in work, in kids, in like, I can't, this is clearly a pattern, right? It was a pattern that I inherited of overworking, workaholism, all of that. So I started to just begin to install five minutes of meditation and five minutes of dance to really speak to this whole concept of what sparks joy. For some people, it might be gardening, it might be their pets, it might be reading your favorite book. Um, you know what it is. It's really music. just really, hmm? some people love listening to music or other people, you know, love cooking or, you know, yes. even just, um, you know, looking, I, I mean, we can get caught in surfing the internet, but like looking at beautiful images. I mean, there's so many things that nature can joy, but I, exactly. <laughs> it's funny you say nature because it's like, I'm in New York city. So I'm like, oh, right. There's nature. <laughs> <laughs> well, to your point, you could watch a, a video of the ocean. Like there's certain places in the world. Um, for, for me, Tulum is one of them. That's where I lead my retreats just that beach. There's a very specific beach that I go to that when I look at it, my whole nervous system responds. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm good friends with Mark Metz, who's the founder of conscious dancer magazine. Now all of his st- stuff, like all of his work is digital, but back in the day, he would actually print physical conscious dancer magazines. I don't know if you ever got them, but, um, I just remember even though I'm reading something, reading about conscious dance was like, like the most luscious, flavorful, like chocolate. (laughs) Like it just, I'm so in love with this thing. Like, it's so funny, you know, how certain things were just wired in certain ways. So even just reading an article about healing through movement or conscious stance would light me up. Not quite as amazingly as doing it, but close, you know, yeah. but my point is it's the, it's the thing that you're most passionate about and just starting to sprinkle that into your day in five minute increments can just make all the difference. I love that. Um, you know, because I think that a lot of times I agree. People do think I need my outer environment to change in order to feel better. Um, And of course, there's ways to work with your beliefs without doing things that bring you joy. But I love what you just said, because it's almost like from the inside out, if you choose to do activities that bring you joy, then you can ask yourself, how do I feel about myself? How do I feel about life? Um, that just shifts your vibe and you have to believe you deserve it in order to take the time. Yeah. But I find that five minutes 
is a hack. It's a really, really, really good hack because our beliefs, yes, can say, I don't have 15. I don't have 20. I don't have 30. I definitely don't have an hour. Right. And it'll argue that all day long and it's going to win. But everybody knows we all waste five minutes here and five minutes there. It's true. Period. End of story. It's I don't care. True. Yeah. Who I'm talking to. So the five minute rule is super sneaky and it can totally get around all the, the, I don't, I'm not worth it. The unworthiness paradigm really truly doesn't argue with five minutes. Cause we're we, like, well, just, just five minutes. Right. It's and then true. get in and it, and then it's contagious. Like it catches like wildfire and it's momentum building. If you'll just do like an experiment. So I usually start my clients with like a seven day experiment, but you want it to be, you want to see it because the brain is wired for consistency. So if you give yours, like put on a cat, like an actual physical calendar. I mean, a lot of our younger people, you could also do it digitally, but there's something super cool about physically seeing it and then just putting a little check mark off, you know? Um, so if you have like a whiteboard or, or if you have a physical calendar, you can check it off, but you're, that's why streaks are so freaking popular, right? With our, with our younger generation, they don't want to break their streaks because mm -hmm. the brain is addicted to it. So if you can turn your five minutes of whatever you want to do, you know, whatever that is, um, the other thing, one other tool that I will say, particularly for people who have an extreme, um, sense of like self shame or the inner critic is just rampant is before going to bed. One of my favorite tools is have a journal by your bed and just give yourself three wins because what we praise raises the word raise is inside of the word praise. It raises your vibrational frequency. True. You can start with like the smallest thing, like, you know, I don't know. I ate dinner. I <laughs> fed the dog. I, cause the other thing is the critic will like, well, you did nothing. Well, you're a total loser. Like you always get it wrong. And that part of us is looking for what went wrong. It's programmed from fear. But if you just start focusing on three little things that you did well, what we focus on expands. And all of a sudden you will little by little start noticing really what's going well. Like as a professional dancer, I had this perception where I was trained to look for what was wrong, mm -hmm. look for where I'm not matching and make myself match, look for the flaws. And that bled into this really horrible body image. And it took years. I will say some of this work is really, really rigorous, it takes years to install it. So it can take years and lots of repetition and rigor to install a new operating system. But if you stay consistent and get mentorship, you know, truly to get mentorship and to get support. I mean, I know Valerie, you provide mentorship and coaching and support that repetition is, and that accountability and the love of somebody holding space for you. That's what I leaned on, you know, for me. I can now honestly say I can be standing in front of a bathroom mirror or on the scale or the, one of the worst places I know for me was the dressing room with the worst lighting and like the wraparound mirrors where you can see every right, everything. And you're like, oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't know. oh my God, <laughs> that was a trigger spot for me for many, many years. I can go into these places and I can just see the vehicle for my soul and then look past the fascia, the adipose tissue, right? And the framework and the form and really recognize that I am looking at spirit. I am looking at dancing filaments of light. And there's so much about my body that's working really, really well. You know, like I literally have two hands and two feet. And I say that because one of my very first programs that I rolled out, which was these, it was um, a morning five minute practice and an evening five minute practice. And I couldn't see any of the students. It was all pre-recorded videos. This was years and years ago. 
And I remember this one woman talking about how much she was lighting up and all of a sudden, somehow over the course of connecting with her, and I had hundreds of people doing this with me morning and night, morning and night for 30, it was like a 30 day challenge. I find out that she's missing multiple limbs. Like, I don't remember, but I just remember she didn't have all, like she didn't even have all of her limbs. And it just like, it was just this, cause I was still pretty early in bringing this into the world. I just remember feeling, I will never look at my body the same. And I had come really far already in the work, but I'm like, here she is loving her body and she doesn't even have all of her limbs. And I know she's not alone. I know there may be people listening that are like, yeah, that's me, you know? So just, just gratitude, gratitude for what we do have, what, what is working, focusing on that. And as we focus on what is working and you have to cause yourself I, I get it that it's, it doesn't come naturally right away and that's okay. You know, there, I, we have a human self and we have a higher self, the higher self can cause the human self to think any thought we want it to think. It's just remembering that, oh, this record that's playing that I'm not enough and I'm not good. And I'm all the negative. It's just a record. I can take the, what do they call it on the the needle on the record, All right. yeah. <laughs> the needle. <laughs> I can pick that up and I can put it in a different place or for more modern analogy, you know, I you can, can press pause on the MP3 <laughs> <laughs> and, and put on another one. <laughs> exactly. I can change my playlist as quickly as, as needed. Exactly. But it's true. And that's why all the mind body spirit tools are so important because if, the mind is beating us up, then we can get into the body and do what gives us joy in the body. Or if you feel an unpleasant emotion, then you can look at what thoughts you have that are causing it. And if you do a spiritual practice like meditation, then you might be able to change your thoughts or find evidence that what you want to believe is true, such as you know, looking in the mirror and focusing on what you love about yourself, like you're talking about and having gratitude for the ways that your body is beautiful. And so um, I, I love all of the innovative practices that you're talking about. Um, what would you say are the biggest go-to practices and I agree five minutes is the perfect little hack to get beyond our resistance. So what would you say five minute practices are to work with, you know, the um, limiting beliefs uh, intellectually? Because yeah, I know we've talked a lot about the physical practices. Um, yeah. And I know your brave thinking tools work a lot with the transformational coaching uh, practices. So tell us a little bit more about that too. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Hmm. I would say if there's, there's so many, right. But I'm just really wanting to dial in a couple of really specific examples that also connect to people that I've supported. So quick example, Benjamin Blackett is a male who came in to do some work. He's one of our trained uh, transformational coaches. We also certify coaches and he came up to me wanting to see if I knew somebody who could come in and lead movement in his workshops. But you know how when you can just kind of read between the lines and you just can feel there's something else that's really, what's the deeper question here, right? Mm -hmm. Really sense was his deeper question was he wanted to be able to lead movement or just do movement and bring more joy into his workshops and be more confident in his workshops. And so I invited him to come and do some transcendence with me. And I said, listen, at the very least, so that you, if you do have somebody that you come, that comes in and teaches for you, you're able to understand this language and what you're asking for and how to ask for it in a confident way. So he comes in and to quote him, he's kind of walking around like with his tail tucked under his legs. You know what I mean? Like just, and kind of hunched over and he had this apologetic mm. body posture and it was totally unconscious, right? Which isn't uncommon, especially here in the Western world for 
people in general who were ever 11 years old, where usually is right around that teenage puberty, you know, where you're dancing somewhere and somebody says something that just, boom, it's this traumatic little T moment that then can freeze you in time. And all of a sudden you just to say, it's not safe. I'm never going to do that again. Right. And I'm then not good at it. And then yeah, your body I'm, language reflects that. Yeah. And so for him, he was told he has two left feet. He can't dance his way out of a paper bag, so on and so forth. The great thing I know, you know, this about conscious dance and transcendence is there is no right or wrong way. There is no choreography that you're learning. You're re- literally just remembering what it was like when you were liberated, free, open, expansive as a child. You know, I've never met a kindergartner that truly, unless they've had some sort of trauma, right, is telling me they don't like to dance or is telling me they can't dance or that they have to. They, that's just not in our vocabulary. It's just, music plays and our body goes end of story Mm -hmm. for the most part, for the most part. And I've been around a lot of kindergartners in my raising of my kids and being around this work for a really long time. So one of the tools, right. To be really, really specific is to remember that free state you were when you were a child. Mm. And if you don't have that, if you never felt that, because I know for some not as many, but there's a small percentage that had so much trauma that they never felt free, right? Watch children because we have actually, our neurotransmitters have mirror neurons. So you can see someone being free and those mirror neurons actually wake up and it activates that sense of freedom in us. And one of the stages in transcendence is the dance of, dance of synergy, where you'll have one person that's activating that inner child within, totally playing and being free. And the other person is mirroring that energy. And it stretches us outside of our comfort zone. It's super playful, it's super fun but you don't have to be in transcendence or be doing the dance of synergy just to ask yourself what song makes me feel like I'm a kid again, Mm -hmm. put that song on and just literally hop around, jump around, move around your space like a kid. And all of a sudden you forget you're an adult. You forget Mm -hmm. all of the adult programming. You forget what you weren't good at, you know, or just your troubles fall away and you just let that joyful spirit come out to play. So that's one one tool is really activating that and coming coming into life with that joyful inner child like curiosity. Another one is if I'm feeling super triggered emotionally. Somebody said something to me, I've been treated in a certain way, I got rejected. I feel like I super failed. Um I, you know, just whatever the old programming is that's, that's Mm -hmm. running where you can immediately feel either a sense of anger, a sense of fear, a sense of anxiousness, that charge, right? It's this low vibration charge. Mm -hmm. Um, I do the dance of shift, the dance of shift. So I have 10, 10 different dance phases, stages, and transcendence. The dance of shift comes right around the middle of our, of our class, but you can do it in five minutes, just like you can do the inner child, you know, mirror dance in five minutes. Like it's super easy. So the dance of shift is much more tribal though. So I would usually use drumming music, like African drums or Taylor Swift, shake it off Mm -hmm. or, um, uh, another one, but the dust, you know, that song dun dun dun. Right. So that kind of energy. And I literally shake my body like I'm shaking off an old dusty rug or a dog that's shaking water 
off of its back. Um, and I find that energy living in me and I move it through my system. And I imagine I'm shaking it to the earth or shaking it into a fire pit to have it burn away. And I completely empty, empty, empty. It's like taking out the trash. I scream, I yell, I moan. It can be tapping. It can be wiping. It's pretty rigorous. Now, if there's an injury, you can do it slow-mo and you can use more tapping and wiping mo movements or motions, or you can literally just shake it off in your mind. When I've been in my own healing through different things in my life, and it wasn't, I couldn't for health reasons, literally do the dance of shift. I would do as much as I could physically that felt comfortable, but in my mind, we're free. Our, you know, and our minds were free and that, and then, but here's what I've learned. It's not enough just to empty the cup. You want to be really clear towards the last 30 to 45 seconds of that practice. Okay. So now that I've released this, what am I filling up with? What am I claiming? And you just fill up with love. You fill up with peace. You fill up with forgiveness. You fill up with bravery. You fill up with all of the high energy you know, you can literally imagine that you're taking your hands and you're in this sea of love and you're scooping it up. And you're like, if you were an empty chalice, you're filling yourself back up and sealing that in. And you, it's a, it, it's a shift. Like it's shocking to me how triggered at times I can feel depending on just all sorts of life circumstances, how fast this works how fast it's so fast it's so effective it's amazing um and breath breathing really working with breath really working with breath and then um i would say i mean there's 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 i could go through all 10 stages and unpack them but you know really focusing on the dance of synergy and the inner child work the dance of shift really releasing the charged low vibration in and then calling in the higher vibration and then the dance of surrender is really one of my favorites. And it's really where I'm dancing with God. I'm dancing with my higher self. I'm dancing with my vision for what I would love. You could call it movement manifestation, where in your mind, you can create any scene you want, right? So if you're wanting to manifest a, a healthier, more loving relationship with your spouse, you can imagine in your mind that it's the two of you on the dance floor and there's so much love and so much connection and so much sensual sensuality and this energy. And you can have a, one song that really ignites that for you. You know, like a, what would be a song, Valerie? I'm trying to think of like, I know um, Celine Dion, the power of love does that for me. Like oh, I love yes. her. Oh, yeah. the power of love and it's all about this romance. And so I would turn that song on and I can either be having a love affair with me. I could be having a love affair with God, or I could be having in my imagination, a love affair with my significant other, especially if there's strife or arguments, I can just put that aside and just say on the level of soul and spirit, all is well. And I'm going to immerse myself and put my energy, my emotions in this frequency. Now, if we've had a fight, I probably would do the dance of shift first. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and you just shake it off. You know, I, I hear you. You're like, I don't know if I can just get put myself in that state, you know, that's why having something like the dance of shift and do it for 20 minutes, do it as long as it takes to like, really let it all out of you all go, you cry and scream and whatever, whatever's required. But it is important to recognize that the condition, you can still be really mad at him or her or whoever it is, right? on a, a part of you, the human part of you that is hurt, that's angry, that's frustrated. And yet the soul you can decide, I love this being unconditionally, regardless of their current actions. And I can come from a place of love, right? 
because we can choose love no matter what's going on. We can say, what would love do here? How would love listen? How would love speak? And love can be fierce. Love can create really important, powerful boundaries because it's you loving you that you're not allowing yourself to be treated a certain way or talked to a certain way, but it's calm, it's confident, and it's loving. Exactly. I, I, I love what you just said because a lot of times if we want to, if we do feel angry or, um, you know, we do uh, feel hurt by something that our partner did and we just want to express it from that low vibration place, then we're going to push them away. But if we, like you said, take responsibility, and then first of all, we shake off all those emotions and connect to that unconditional love, then we can say, hey, I'm angry and here's what I need. But we can come from a really heart-centered place when we do that because we've taken responsibility. And that is going to make all the difference. 1000%. I will say, I know I shared a lot about my burnout and making that decision to make a change in my life. But I will tell you this, doing exactly what you've just said and taking full responsibility for my state that he doesn't have to change anything. My kids don't, nothing outside of me needs to change for me to put me in the center of my own circle of love, begin to install these five minute practices that now are much longer, you know, but at first they were shorter amounts of time. I started to feel loved and cared about and the more I felt loved and cared about and that I was taking care of my own needs. All of a sudden, I start becoming a better mother and a better spouse. And I can tell you this, we'll be, we'll be celebrating 29 years. That's so crazy to say oh in gosh. April. I know that's wow. craziness. It's craziness. Um, and I can guarantee you a thousand percent if I hadn't taken full responsibility and made these shifts, I know we wouldn't be married today. And, and we're amazing. He's my soulmate. I'm so grateful, you know, that I found tools and that I really began to take responsibility. And I feel really honored to be able to share um, what's worked for me with anyone that this might be helping today. So thank you for having me. Oh, yes. And absolutely. And that's such an inspiring um, story there, you know, because um, I I think that all couples get in um moments of disconnect or arguing or uh, feeling upset at each other and that could break them apart or if people take responsibility like you're talking about of um and you know of course there's uh both men and women in my audience mostly women but for us as women taking responsibility for our feminine energy and being in our bodies and finding joy and gratitude and love in our bodies and then speaking and that, like you said it can sound fierce it can sound um like hey we need to be accountable for this but if it's coming from joy and love on an absolute plane then you can deal with the challenge that's happening in the moment from a confident place confidence just meaning that you've taken that time out for yourself to connect with that truth of who you are on a deeper level because all that other stuff is temporary on a deeper level we can always co-create these win-win solutions for us and everybody if we are in our joy and you know what you're talking about these five minute practices which i agree um my uh unconscious mind doesn't sometimes let me meditate for longer than five minutes too because you know my resistance comes up but if i say okay five minutes then i'll do it <laughs> so i can right? really agree with you <laughs> and then a lot of times i'm like oh i can go longer you know but you have to start with five minutes if we do that if we put ourselves first if we prioritize what we need to feel grounded and centered and fulfilled then we get ideas for how to make what we want possible. And so yeah. I love that you have all these tools and practices. And um, I know that you actually have two free gifts of which we talked about in the beginning, one about confidence and the other, um, a sample transcendence class, which we didn't talk a lot about, but I know that that's one of your signature offerings. So if you yes. want to share more about that. Yeah. So I've created um, what's called the confidence kit. 
And it's a free ebook with fun five minute practices to rejuvenate your mind, body, and soul. So there's the five minute confidence lifter that in five minutes, it'll help you feel more confident, beautiful, and loved in your own skin. It's a real, you know, shifting body shame or self-criticism into love and acceptance. Then I have the five minute body energizer, which is really what I've talked about today. And it will help you energize your body and enjoy fun and pleasure through movement and embodiment. And then the five minute soul rejuvenator, which helps you really feel inspired and rejuvenated just really in connection to this power breathing you. And so, and I unpack even more of those in um, the ebook. And then there's also a guided self-love meditation. So totally fun, free gift there. And then Transcendance is what I'm, I've been talking about the dance of shift, the, you know, movement, uh, you know, manifestation through movement, the dance of synergy or are three of the 10 stages of a full 60 minute practice. So I offer Transcendance on Zoom, powered by Zoom. For, our, for clients all over the world, we host classes every um, other Saturday. So two Saturdays a month, basically. Um, usually it's about a 90 minute time. We come together, we connect, we set our intention. There's some floor work and it's for all ages. It's for all mobility levels. Bring your headache, bring your hurt hip, bring your crutches. You know, literally like you can do transcendence in any state. I have lots of clients that say they weren't quite feeling all that great. And at the end of class, it's a complete reset in mind, body, and soul. So I know you're going to put the link to that as well as the coupon code yes. on your page so they can claim that. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. If you're on YouTube, then the links will be below the video. And if you're listening to the podcast on any of the platforms, it should be in the show notes. And um, if not, then you can go to my website under podcast and it'll be there. And I have all the show notes on the page. So I uh, love what you said, because I think that um, we all need these tools and five minutes is something that we all can afford the time for. And, yeah. you know, cause a lot of times, especially in our modern world, we get so distracted and we get so overwhelmed with what we have to do. And as you said, that's for everyone and everything else. And we need to can really I close. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh yeah. I was just going to say, we need to prioritize ourselves because then what comes out of us is going to be our best gifts to give to the world. So anyway, of course, I want to hear what you're going to say. Yeah, no, I just want to underscore that. I really do feel that that my work in, I help men and women, but particularly I have a sweet spot like you for helping women change agents. That if we're at, we're at war with our bodies or with our life, then we're not, there's this block, there's this, this static to being able to really unlock the true gifts that we've been given to be the change agents that we're born to be in this, in this world, in this life. But no, I just had this really great story that I, I felt guided to close with this inspirational story of one of my clients named Lori, who came in to do some of this work with me in a coaching capacity, as well as movement. And her, so her one thing she wanted to shift, like the one big result, right, was she hadn't been intimate with her husband in 10 years. Wow. And she wanted him to instigate. She wanted to be like swept off her. She wanted him to come home from work and like sweep her off her feet and, you know, take her into the bedroom. Right. And so we began to do some work. And so here's a result that she's having. And it would be really easy to think, well, th there's something wrong with him right? Like he needs to change. I need to get him interested in me or having this outside, you know, like he's the problem, right? Why won't he be more intimate with me? And I really just helped her take full responsibility and really just start working with her own inner love affair with herself and her mm -hmm. own really divine feminine energy, because it is the divine feminine. That's like the flower that attracts the bee to come and pollinate. But if the flower is tight and kind of rigid and running a lot of masculine energy, then that masculine energy 
with masculine energy doesn't, you're not, you're not at that attractive force. And we literally started to work with this five minute movement practice where it was just five minutes a day. We worked with a very specific song that made her feel really lovely, beautiful, connected to her sensual siren self, to her divine feminine. And, and she just started cultivating and nurturing this divine feminine energy. And it did not, I mean, like, I love how quickly this can work because mm-hmm. she just went to the grocery store and she was like, she had her hair down and, you know, she comes home and she's taking the groceries out and she's just in this feminine, sensual energy. And just as we had crafted in her vision, he comes home and picks her up and whisks <laughs> off her feet and like twirls her around and makes mad, passionate love to her. And she called me up, you know, just like crying and celebrating and laughing and telling me this story. And I'm like, Lori, you know, just, so this is how it works. Mm -hmm. It's about creating this, generating this energy within ourselves and then noticing how it turns on the world. It turns on everything, not in like a sexual way necessarily, although that was part of what she wanted, but we are the igniters women. Mm -hmm the female energy are the igniters of flow, of love, of collaboration, of connection, of, of healing, of forgiveness, of, I believe all that this world is craving. And we need structure. We need masculine energy. We need that go-getter energy. I'm not saying to dim that. I'm just saying, let's match it. Let's right. have balance. Let's bring that forward. And I love that that's what you're bringing forth in this podcast. And it really is a coming home to the mm-hmm. mind, and the body and the spirit. So thank you for what you do. Yeah. Well, and likewise, you know, that's such an inspiring story because so many of my clients think that the guy is the one that needs to change. And that's such a beautiful example that when you shift into your feminine energy and get in your own joy and pleasure and sensuality that's what then inspires the man the masculine energy to come towards us Uh, but it's hard to recognize that when we're stuck in our heads we need to get back into our bodies and into our emotions and so i love that that's what your work is about too thank you thank you so much for having me it's just such an honor truly Oh, well, likewise. And so I encourage everybody to, if you love this uh, video or audio, please like it and uh, share it with those you love because everybody needs to be inspired in their own way with what brings them joy and passion and love because the world, as you said, can't get enough of that. And it does come from within. So thank you so much. And until next time. Bye.